Today, we shine the spotlight on monarchies and ask the question, do they serve a purpose in a democratic South Africa? Joining me to talk about this, author and historian, Shalom Bata, socialist, Dr. Trevor Ngwane, traditional and cultural expert, Hoshi Sitlamurahu Tobijane, and honorary controller president, Ngozi Patekile Olomisa. To be a part of this conversation tonight, send us uh, your thoughts and comments on WhatsApp, 72 Double five eight four. Otherwise, you can tweet us tonight at Newsroom four zero five. Uh, good evening, uh, gentlemen, and thank you very much uh, for your time and joining us uh, tonight here on In Focus. So we are still waiting for uh, the uh, rest of the panel members to come on. Shalom Bata will come on, uh, as well as uh, uh, Hoshi Tobejane will be coming on shortly uh, as they uh, battle through that uh, connection. But uh, and goes Let me begin with you. Does democracy in Chegas, uh, or let me say democracy building in South Africa require us to, to reconcile modern and traditional institutions of governance? Yes, you're putting it right when you juxtapose modern and traditional because democracy is not, is not, a, is not is, is part of uh, the institution of traditional leadership. Uh, we conduct our ourselves in a democratic manner when we deal with matters pertaining to the interests of uh, society. We consult the community. We listen to their views. We combine them and then come up with a decision that we pronounce on the basis of what the people have said. As a traditional leader, don't just do as you please. Uh, you listen to the views of the people, listen to their wishes, you carry out their aspirations, you interact with government, civil society, the private sector, in order to ensure that the service that those sectors uh, have to provide. So democracy and uh, the institution of traditional leadership are quite compatible with each other. Yeah. Of course, you'll have... Uh, Aberrations here and there, people who will be autocratic and dictatorial, dictatorial, uh, like you get in the Western inspired uh, form of uh, democracy, which is through elections. You can elect a person only to find that you elected a very bad person. And um, you depend now on the checks and balances that are to be found in each of these two systems yeah. in order to make sure that. Uh, uh, the democratic wishes of the people are respected and carried out. And how are the customary structures held accountable, for example, to, to prevent extreme forms of governance? You've just mentioned, I mean, others said it's not a question of whether it's, it's a monarch and republics, but it's a question of uh, dictatorship and democracy. Yes, you see, the, the custodians of the institution, uh, the royal family members, they in turn they are in a position to determine whether or not the incumbent is uh, leading in accordance with the wishes and the interests of the of the community or the nation if the royal family fails then you have uh, what we call traditional councils where you have uh, traditional leaders members of the royal families and uh, uh, prominent members of society people who are knowledgeable with the customs, the history, the rules, the laws of the community. And then if that structure also fails, then the entire nation or community has the responsibility to come up and uh, put things to order by calling, all of, calling on those who are failing to do their work uh, to do it properly. Dr. Nguane, uh, does the existence of miniature monarchs uh, collide with our attempt to, to animate our democracy in any way? Yeah, well, certainly uh, there is uh, a tension uh, in some instances, a contradiction in the sense that, I mean, democracy is about contradiction. I think Ingo C has maybe covered that point that they do consult, but certainly uh, chiefs and traditional leaders are not elected. And also, you know, as he himself was saying, 
uh, we are uncertain about the exact structures of accountability. So, for example, you know, one of the things we are fighting for as grassroots uh, organizations is to have a right of recall for, you know, councillors, premiers, members of parliament, and even the president. So if the masses feel that you are not doing a proper job, we should be able to remove you. So I think that is an idea which is perhaps very far from, you know, traditional leadership. So what I'm saying is that, yeah, there are tension and, uh, you know, they are worth discussing. Khoshis Islam Rahul Tobejani joining us now. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for your time uh, and coming through. Uh, please just uh, address one, 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 one issue that uh, Dr. Mgane is raising there. How, how to reconcile the values of democracy with a monopolized power, and he says there, particularly through a justification of, of birthright. So you can't remove that person because you're saying, no, I'm a king by, by birth, it's my birthright. Where, where else, if it's an elected a political individual in a state, for example, you're able to recall that particular council. Good evening and thanks for uh, inviting me to be part of this uh, discussions. Uh, I may not be sure whether uh, the public representative in the form of democratically elected individuals are free to be recalled by the public. I don't remember that kind of clause in the Constitution. But uh, uh, it is true that institution of traditional leadership, because God, you know, the, the Royal Council that are the custodian of the whoever might be in the you know, uh, incumbent uh, and uh, are entitled to whatever is not, it's not doing what their custom and tradition is about. Uh, uh, to put, uh, uh, you know, the report and, and to communicate it to government. It is just unfortunate. I do know of uh, in, uh, you know, in case, cases where uh, 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 those who wanted to report on the basis of failing or carry out that tradition and culture I don't enjoy the support of government for one reason or another. Uh, more often, it, it depends on the willingness of uh, uh, whoever is in, in that position. But the Royal Council are uh, forever uh, in consultation with the Royal Family, of course, with the traditional Council and the elders within the society to say, this person does not uh, reflect our true uh, you know, uh, impression of who we are. Support. Yeah. Let, 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 let's get your, your considerations then, Hoshi, on, on the linkages that you think exist uh, between customary governance uh, and, and democracy building. Look, uh, uh, however, we, we are, uh, you know, uh, born into this position while the other party is elected. But it does not, if you look at the merit in terms of our, you know, how do we work and how do we consult with our communities. Uh, traditionally, we, we use, uh, it might be different uh, in, in our culture, uh, we normally blow what we call power power. And once a meeting has been does not select who should attend. In fact, it invites every member of the, state, the community. Whereas, in terms of the elected democratic dispensation, you will find that uh, only the 490 who are in parliament are the ones who are taking on behalf of the community. And more often, we we'll talk about uh, we have, we have uh, uh, consulted, we have uh, went through public participation. Consultation that they are talking about. If you you take records of what the people are saying on the ground, what the legislators are concluding in parliament, they are two completely different. You know, uh, 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 the views of the people are subjected to uh, the rule of those that have been selected. Whereas in terms of the uh, uh, traditional leadership institution, 
uh, everybody is free to raise and set. Uh, let's use this part, portion of land for this and that. And we concluded don't go upset, no, only the royal family will decide after the discussion. The discussion concluded and have a resolution here and now with everybody being happy out of that particular discussion. Kosutobe Jane, there we're having some difficulty in uh, that uh, linkage. I uh, will try and re-establish uh, that connection there uh, with uh, Hoshi Tobejan is still with us and go see uh, Patagila Olomisa as well as Dr. Trevor Nguani. We'll continue with that conversation. Shalom Bato will join us in a moment as well. We ask you the question, uh, monarchies, do they serve a purpose in a democratic South Africa? 72 110 Tweet us tonight at Newsroom 405. We're back in a moment. Come back. You're live with us tonight on In Focus News in Africa, Channel 405. The conversation continues. Uh, Shalom Bata, Dr. Trevor Nguani, Ngozi Patagile Olomisa, as well as Hoshi Sitlamrahu Tobejani joining us tonight. And your views on 072-110-584 on Twitter at Newsroom 405. And In Focus tonight in particular uh, is uh, the conversation around uh, monarchs and, uh, of course, the customary governance and the democracy building project. What are the linkages and uh, what needs to be reviewed or how best shall we say to address customary governance structures within the framework of uh, democracy support uh, programs. Dr. Uh, Trabangwani, let's, let's talk then about what are the constitutional or uh, political um, uh, requirements of a monarch in South Africa currently and, and, and how actually that uh, functions uh, in, in practice. Yeah, well, uh, I think uh, uh, Amako Sihua here can tell us more about their role, duties, and functions as written down in the statute books. But uh, I know that they represent uh, what is called cultural uh, beliefs, uh, traditional beliefs, customs. So they are the custodians of that. And also they've got the task of maintaining social cohesion. Uh, but uh, my real question to Amakosi, who are here, is uh, where do they stand in relation to the suffering of the masses in South Africa? We all know that, uh, you know, people here are facing problems of poverty, unemployment, inequality, you know, so, and we know that workers are exploited, you know, in the factories, getting small wages. So I just want, uh, you know, our Amakosi to locate themselves in this struggle. Do they stand with the exploiter or do they stand with those who are exploited? Do they stand with the rich or do they stand with the poor? And I think we can maybe take the conversation yeah. along those lines. Absolutely. Our customer institutions, because particularly Olomisa, are able to give answer to uh, issues of transformation, uh, for example. Uh, are they able to give answer to issues of labor exploitation, uh, issues of economic growth, and, and, and the difficulty of uh, poverty and inequality? Uh, you might be aware that the Constitution has stripped us almost all of the powers that we had traditionally and in terms of the legislation of the past. Uh, you might, uh, or the viewers might be aware that, first of all, traditional leaders are the custodians of land, the communal land that was fought, fought for by our people in the past, led by our forefathers, the traditional leaders of the time. That's why you see the names of the lands that we live in are called Tembu land, for instance, after the Tembu king of the time, Zulu land, after the leader of the Zulu at the time, and so on and so on, Sekukune land and, and, and so on. So we have a responsibility, therefore, to make sure that there's adequate land for our people as traditional leaders so that they are able to produce food for themselves and their families, so that they are able to provide uh, shelter for their families. Uh, it is in our interest that our people are all employed, 
because the land that we have at our disposal is not large enough to make sure that everybody can produce for themselves. And uh, it's our interest, in our interest, therefore, that uh, there be good labor relations at the workplace, that uh, our people are not exploited, that they get what they deserve. Uh, in the past, traditional leaders would visit their people, not subjects, because uh, we don't have such a name in our vernacular subject. They are people in the work centers where they listened to the concerns of their people in their workplaces, and then they would interact with the management to ensure that uh, there's a fair treatment of, uh, of the people as workers. Of course, we know that the apartheid system was exploiting everybody. Uh, we would not be in a position to succeed in ensuring that uh, the exploitation of the workers at their workplaces is done away with, but we did manage to make sure that uh, some form of fairness, fair treatment of the workers yeah. was there. The, we were also uh, responsible for mobilizing resources to ensure that the amenities like health facilities, like schools in our areas, uh, by making sure that the people themselves are able to work for themselves, but uh, supported, of course, by government because uh, most of the resources, the taxes, yeah, uh, in the custody of the government. Yeah. So in general, we have always been on the side of the poor. We continue to be. And and uh, and, and, and and other monarchs are, are able to rise above that influence of government and the money that is provided uh, by government and maybe even the politics of that government in power. You see, uh, the corruption that we have here. Uh, which is uh, manifesting itself more in the manner in which some politicians and civil servants are using state resources uh, corruptly. It is uh, the corruption is caused by also the private sector because they are the ones who bribe government, uh, civil servants, and so on, politicians. So as uh, traditional leaders, we are not immune from being... Uh, infected by that kind of disease because some people will come and give us uh, the things that we need and also luxuries that you don't really need and make us uh, look more important than we are giving us some of us cars especially those uh, who live in areas that are rich with uh, mineral resources they buy them mansions build them mansions and those kinds of things but our customs don't allow us to enrich ourselves at the expense of, of the people. We owe allegiance to our ancestors who left us with the responsibility to ensure that we look after the land that they fought for, we look after the people that uh, they left us to be able to look after. Yeah. So spiritually, religiously, and also in terms of the law, we are not uh, amenable to becoming uh, as uh, corrupt as other forms of leadership tend to be because their lifespan is very limited. In general, they are given five years, and then after five years, they don't know where they are going to be, so they want to accumulate as much as they can within the shortest space of time. We don't have that uh, pressure as traditional leaders to want to enrich ourselves so quickly that uh, we forget about the interests of the people. Khus I know you're there. We might not be getting your picture, but um, you, you can weigh in on this. A question from Dr. Angwane there saying, how are the kings, uh, the chiefs, how are they aligned in the transformation conversation, in the economic uh, transformation conversation, in the uh, issues such as uh, labor exploitation in the country? Uh, which side, basically, do you take? Well, obviously, we are, we are with our people. We, we are... We are living with them, we are staying with them, and uh, we, our way of doing things is rooted into uh, uh, our way of uh, consultation. Because despite that we are the custodians of our land on behalf of our communities, at the end of the day, we, we don't just sit wherever we are and decide that... Uh, 
uh, the land should 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 go that way, not that way. However, as uh, Mr. alluded to it, that uh, uh, our our own people, together with the so-called investors, private sectors, and to large extent government itself, uh, because there are some, you know. Uh, 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 public representatives that are holding offices in, in government who are charged with the responsibility of uh, making sure that life becomes easy on the ground. And they abuse their offices more often. Uh, 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 whenever you hear that there is a challenge in terms of uh, allocation or uh, authorizing a portion of land, uh, towards uh, 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 mining activities, you'll find that a, a minister or officials within that uh, that are the ones who are playing a, a, a prominent role in, in making sure that they are corrupting our leaders. Mm. However, our leaders, even when you corrupt them, they will know that uh, they can't do it with them alone in mm. their offices. They have to call uh, uh, by people and then to communicate that there is this possible uh, development that uh, it's earmarking a portion of land that is used for this and that, uh, and, and to people will will advise. And of course, uh, uh, you should you should know that uh, we thought uh, the evolution of democracy will will have a, a, a positive you know eye into the. Uh, institution, but uh, whatever we were, uh, the way we were treated by the colonizers, the apartheid, and others, uh, it, it, it just if it was a picnic, you know, a, a Sunday school picnic uh, motion, because uh, uh, our old people who were supposed to empower and capacitate the institution, they've, they've put it, you know, under stress and even the apartheid itself. Therefore, we need to understand that they themselves contribute to make individuals within the institution to have easily been corrupted because they are sitting with their, uh, their wealth in their uh, land, but these wealth, are, they've got no role, they've got no influence into how do they do. Government was supposed to be helping these communities to say, you have got this wealth in your land, and as government, this is the assistance we are giving to you. But otherwise, what they're doing, they're doing the opposite. They come with the uh, uh, private sectors, partnering with them, uh, uh, either uh, legally or illegally, and pursue uh, the poor uh, traditional leader yeah. and its people into uh, the, uh, the system that it's, it's unlike ourselves. We believe in consultation and having an open discussion and resolution. We'll come back uh, to that in a moment and get a response from Dr. Trevor Nguani. That he's got that response. By and large, uh, the, the, the kings, they're saying that uh, the traditional authority is not entirely insulated from the influence, uh, certainly, of money and uh, political uh, leadership uh, in certain areas, particularly mineral-rich areas, which, uh, in a sense, uh, uh, gets them into uh, compromised positions, uh, shall we say. We'll continue in a moment and get your views as well. 072 -110 Tweet us at Newsroom 405. When we continue next, we'll also put the question uh, to the chiefs and the kings on what actually is the role of uh, customary institutions uh, in answering the question of gender-based violence. There is a gender dimension uh, to their functioning, and that certainly always comes under a microscope and is challenged. We'll look a bit more into that when we continue next. Stay with us. Back with you tonight, you're in focus. The conversation tonight, does democracy and customary institutions abide together? And are they the answer uh, to a polarized society with multi-ethnic differences? Uh, and are they the bond that holds things uh, together? Some of the questions we are asking and uh, interrogating uh, tonight. Let us in on your views on 072 or tweet us at Newsroom 405. Dr. I mean, does it concern you that particular issue being raised, that uh, traditional leadership is not entirely insulated, even though it's not uh, a, a, a part of how they should be functioning, but they're not entirely 
entirely in insulated from the influence of uh, money, private sector money in particular, uh, and, and the whims of uh, political leadership? Yeah, that's why I was asking the question, where do they stand, you know, in the divide between the exploiter and the exploited, between the elite and the masses? I mean, we have instances where, such as in Kolobeni, you know, uh, the chiefs are being used to actually, you know, help, uh, you know, predatory mining companies take over people's land in order to mine, destroy the land and make money. And you also know that uh, the many chiefs, you know, where there is mining operations, they receive legally taxes and royalties. So this is a, a matter of great concern. And I just want to link it with what Ingos was saying about how in the new system they have been robbed of their powers. But uh, although they don't have those powers they had before, but they do have a voice. So I want to know, you know, where is the voice of Amakosi when the people are dying of hunger every day? Where is the voice of Amakosi? You know, the bravery we saw with great Amakosi like Bambata Gamanginza, who was prepared to sacrifice his life for his people. Where is the voice of Amakosi when workers are exploited? People are crying out for a basic income grant in the townships, in the rural areas. Children are sleeping hungry. Why are the Amakosi not speaking up and putting pressure on this government to do something to help the people? All right. Uh, I will get Amakosi to respond to that. But I also, uh, uh, Ghost Particular, want you to, to answer this uh, question. Uh, are customary institutions... Um, geared enough to be the voice uh, in dealing with issues of gender-based violence? Because the gender dimension of the functioning of the monarchs is, is always something that uh, comes to question and is criticized. For example, uh, uh, you, you, you get uh, lobby groups that support uh, 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 women empowerment saying women, for example, are not allowed in some quarters to own land, even though uh, it is clearly allowed in our constitution. Yeah, well, it's a question of uh, distortion of uh, the way our customary practices are supposed to be. Uh, you see, land belongs to the community. It's tribal land, it belongs to the tribe. It belongs, therefore, to families. When you allocate a piece of land, you allocate it to a family. And traditionally or conventionally, the head of a homestead of a family is a male because the male is expected to provide for the family. Hence, normally, the person who actually applies for a piece of land would be the male head of the household. In reality, that land does not belong to the man. It belongs to him, himself, and together with his wives and children and other members of the family that depend on them for their livelihood. So it's not true, therefore, that uh, women are denied the rights to own land because the land is intended to benefit families and uh, society. So you don't just give land to anyone who is not in a position to benefit by having that land members of the community. So if a woman, for instance, uh, is, uh, uh, is an adult, has children of her own, she is qualified, she qualifies to get a piece of land in order to provide for her family, just as a man would. For instance, a man who doesn't have a wife, who doesn't have any children, he does not automatically qualify to, to have the land. So it's not true, therefore, that uh, it's women that are being discriminated against. Discrimination is against people who, if they are given land, they are not going to benefit the community, maybe just themselves as individuals. But uh, if, for instance, you want land for business purposes, not just for uh, providing shelter, then uh, you qualify whether you are a man yeah. or a woman to get that land. And, 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 and how... Now, how, how, the how... question of... Uh, question whether... Yeah, you said, uh, let me talk about... 
Yeah, I, 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 like before the, before the you talk about that, I, I just I just wanted to talk yeah. about that w one of the land. How how what is the view then of traditional leadership to uh, women uh, led households? The men could still be alive, but they could be separated, uh, and the the woman is the one taking care of the children, and they would want access to land. Well, if uh, as I say, if a woman needs land in order to provide for his her children then that woman is entitled to, to that. No traditional leader would deny her, especially when she can show that uh, I have uh, children, they depend on me, they rely on me for their livelihood, so I need to provide for them. Then uh, traditional leader together with the councillor, can, with his councillor, uh, is in a position to take a decision that is uh, fair and just. Yeah. Our Bill of Rights is wound. We treat people fairly, regardless of uh, their status, class-wise and otherwise, gender-wise and so on. So we don't uh, arbitrarily, arbitrarily discriminate against people just because they happen to be women or they happen to be poor. In fact, we are inclined towards uh, the poor and the vulnerable. Hence, uh, women who are abused by their husbands, the first place they go to before they go to the police in our areas is the great place of the traditional leader. That's where they get shelter and, uh, and security yeah. in our places. And, and what powers do the traditional leadership possess in that particular case? What role do you play? How do you occupy that space when a woman comes and reports such a case of abuse? Well, we call the husband or whoever is the abuser, we call members of the family, we call elders of that clan for them to come and account as to what, what it is that they are doing in order to ensure that uh, the vulnerable, that is the women, are protected against abu abusers. So we find them. But of course, you, you know, the democratic South Africa does not even have a law that governs how we're supposed to dispense justice. There's a bill called the Traditional Court Bill. It remains in Parliament for years. Every administration is unable uh, to complete it because of uh, the accusations that are levelled against the institution of traditional leaders by some people who don't even live with the traditional leaders in the areas of traditional leaders. But we hear stories that come one now and again in our newspapers that uh, a particular traditional leader in some corner has decided to uh, violate the rights of his uh, people. And the great majority of traditional leaders are doing a great job. And uh, the news media, the newspapers, uh, and yourselves here yeah, don't show any interest where traditional leaders known, are known to be championing development and uh, promoting human rights. It's only when some apparent leader decides to violate the rights of other people that we become a focus of attention. Jose Tomejane, where are the voices of traditional leaders when people are hungry out uh, there and people are jobless? Uh, why, why are the uh, leaders of uh, traditional institutions not rising up strongly in condemning that kind of uh, uh, poverty and uh, deprivation that people in, in society are living under? I'm sure the nature of the institution, if you, you analyze it uh, uh, closely, we, we are not necessarily people who enjoy criticizing. We always put initiative on that table to say, our community, this, our communities want this. For them to improve their, uh, you know, the state of their lives. But we are always unfortunate hitting the deep ears of you know those who are in control and basically because there's no law that empowered the institution uh, uh, to do things and then so as they don't even receive any grants not receive any budget from government bear in mind our people are, are, are contributing into the uh, revenue of the Republic of South Africa, but 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 there's no way in which it comes back directly to us and to them. Uh, we get it through provincial, national, and to a large extent with the municipal, you know, uh, council. 
therefore, ourselves, even, even when we have an idea, a better concept that understood that if we do this, our land will provide to our people and our people will not depend on the end out. Because what is happening as we are talking now, uh, we have turned the rural community into dependent syndrome. Uh, we rely on, uh, you know, the, the, the hands out, and the hands we are in majority in terms of, you know, social grants and uh, other things than any other yeah. uh, citizens of the republic because uh, the, the government does not yeah. allow us to be an active participant in the shaping and the development of our own people. We are sitting with them, looking at them. Whenever they come back from, you know, uh, being active in, in the labor uh, uh, market of our country, they come back home uh, ill and suffering poor they are. So we are uh, to take care of them. Bear in mind, we are uh, 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 counselors, counselors in the form of social workers, Despite the fact that nobody trained us, empowered us, yeah. we have been, you know, doing this uh, inherited from our forebears. We, we are the legislators. We are supposed to develop bylaws of our own communities. But these bylaws are not recognized yeah. by uh, those who are uh, being elected and given the power uh, to recognize and, and, uh, and give us the space to play in terms of health. Uh, uh, you might have seen that... Uh, even when you are saying traditional leaders are supposed to be part of the local government, they don't even have the name. Uh, they are neither councillors nor uh, they are just representatives of rural communities. And when you are putting on uh, uh, structures of, you know, uh, discussing what to do, they are excluded. They are not part of that. Yeah. They don't, they don't, nobody is giving them the space. Therefore, instead of uh, us, Saying and then keeping on criticizing, we are keeping on putting, uh, you know, together the needs of our people and hoping one day we'll have uh, the leaders who will listen to uh, the, the demands and the needs yeah. of our people it, presented to them by traditional leaders. Is that enough, though? We'll tackle that a little bit more when we come back there. Dr. Trevor Nguani, Ngozi Patagila Olomisa, and Hosi Sitamurahu Tobejani. Take your views as well. 072-110-5584. In focus continues shortly. Welcome back tonight. Live with us tonight here on News of Africa Channel 405. The question we ask, are monarchs still relevant and useful in a democratic South Africa? Tweets at Newsroom 405 and on 072-110-584. That's where your WhatsApp messages are coming through. Let's look at some tweets coming through tonight. Godwin saying monarchs serve no purpose in democratic society. That's SYTD, for example, is burning cause of a monarch system which opposes democracy. On WhatsApp tonight from Kitumits in Pretoria, traditional leaders are not partakers in this democracy because their powers are very limited. Secondly, a democracy in many instances clashes with our traditional, uh, with our tradition rather and culture. Mapehu saying, yes, they serve a purpose. The only problem is the constitution. It is more Western than African. It has relegated African culture and tradition to oral evidence. Anything Western is more recognized than African culture and tradition. Our monarchs don't own any land. The state president is above them. They are referred to as traditional leaders. Is Queen Elizabeth a traditional leader? Puledi Shoba in Kha Masimola saying, I think the traditional leadership uh, monarchy or kingship kingdom uh, should be accorded ample space to exist in a democratic setup, save that they still need to be formally modernized as an institution with properly documented governance processes in place. A view tonight coming from our viewers uh, on this one. Dr. Trevang, if you look at that, there is obviously a degree of support for customary governance. Why do you think there is still such a degree of, 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 of or even a popular support for South Africa's uh, uh, monarchs, uh, even with their diminished uh, political power or even constitutional power? Yeah, we are living in an era where our youths are calling out for decolonization. So they want to recover 
and rescue all those ways of doing things, ideas, which the youth feel were suppressed and distorted by the colonizer. So uh, traditional leadership falls under that. Of course, we know that uh, many chiefs were co-opted and those who fought back were suppressed, as I gave the example of Bambata Ramaninza. So uh, in a way, it shows that the new system of capitalist democracy, the democracy of the rich, is not benefiting the people. So the people are open to different ways of doing things, to perhaps progressive chiefs, yeah. as Inko Holomisa is suggesting. So how do we review the overall then function of the role of customer governance in that particular context to help us in, in this particular process with a range of uh, economic transformation projects that we want to embark on and really meaningfully changing the lives of uh, the people. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, with all due respect that, uh, you know, Amakosi might be lacking a vision of uh, alternatives because really with the migrant labor system, you know, rural areas, you know, remain Bantu stands. They are just places where, as the Inkosi was saying, people go and work in Johannesburg, then come back when they are old and sick and are about to die. But 22 million uh, South Africans live in areas governed, uh, you know, or falling under traditional authority. And those 22 million don't have a choice, really. So what is the vision of uh, Amakosi to change the situation, to challenge that system of racial capitalism, which uh, condemned the masses into those uh, Bantu stands. I think, uh, you know, unless we come with a, a solution which addresses the socioeconomic situation seriously and at a massive scale, we should have to turn, you know, traditional authority into a voluntary association where people, because of freedom of culture and belief, can have their chiefs, but those who opt not to can opt out of that system. Yeah, because Patagil, I, I, are monarchs now just willing to accept that they, they have a very little uh, or in fact no discretion when it comes to matters uh, of the state and, and therefore they, they just really uh, uh, choose to, to, to sit and watch and hope that one day there will be a leader in government that will give them a hearing or are, are you coming up with uh, uh, alternatives to addressing these socioeconomic situations? First of all, if we are a truly African state, democratic and modern, the House of Traditional Leaders would have been part and parcel of uh, the lawmaking processes. It should not just be uh, limited to advising the president or government on matters only of culture, tradition, and custom. Uh, are made by people who belong to political parties, the people in, in the parties to which they belong. So even if you may be in agreement with a position adopted by a member of another party, you are not uh, allowed to do that. And yet in our system, you are allowed to say whatever you want to say as long as you say it in a respectful manner. So as long as you are not part and parcel of uh, the lawmaking and decision-making structures of, uh, of the state, uh, we shall remain uh, uh, impotent in, in regard to ensuring that what is right is done. Now, secondly, people who have ideas who are interested in, in a lot of the poor, especially in the rural areas, and of course, even in the townships and uh, informal settlements. There's nothing preventing them from coming to our uh, places and giving them us the advices that they have. Because we are bound with uh, the people we live with in most, in most cases, and uh, some of us are not exposed to the debates that are taking place in the cities and in the cities of the country. So all of these decisions that are being taken in the main 
are taken in environments which exclude traditional leader. So I would advise and, uh, and, and urge uh, people like Ngwane here to come and engage traditional leaders. They will be surprised at the amount of wisdom that resides in the councils of these traditional leaders because traditional leaders don't take decisions only by themselves. They take decisions because they rule and counsel on the advice of, of their people. So what we are saying, therefore, is that uh, we are not yet where we're supposed to be because the original or the descendants of the original rulers of Ambataka Manindi that Ngwane was talking about have been excluded when this land was taken from the African people by colonizers. It was ruled by the traditional leaders and their people. And nobody was complaining about the system of governance because they knew how to deal with traditional leaders who were uh, violating their rights as a people. They could either kill them or just abandon them or just depose them and get somebody else who's in a better position to do that. So what uh, the liberators did, instead of going there and reporting to traditional leaders that uh, we won the war, if we did win it properly, and therefore this is the land, it is in the hands of the people now. What would you like us to do? Then we would have advised them on what to do. But they decided that uh, they are not just going to be the traditional leaders of, of, of our times. They are going to be the, the, the successors of our colonizers. They are going to go to union buildings, go to Bloemfontein, um, go to all of these places and uh, leaving the countryside and the people and their traditional leaders uh, having to decide what, how to fare for themselves. So we have not uh, decolonized as the, as the popular word is now because we took over the systems of the oppressors and the systems of the oppressors were meant to benefit few that were there. Yeah. They were never meant to benefit the majority of the people. So we cannot therefore remedy the damage that was done through the system of the oppressor by using the system of the oppressor. Yeah. So we need, therefore, to have a system that is going to involve institutions of traditional leadership in the decision-making processes. Because, as I say, our mandate is derived from our ancestors. We, res we are responsible to them in order to make sure that we don't do things that would have offended them or that continue to offend them wherever they yeah. are. Because uh, so that, that line, they're deteriorating quite significantly there in, in this part, but uh, we get a gist in the sense of what you're saying. Uh, Hoshi Tobajani, just uh, wrapping up this conversation, in one of the tweets that uh, uh, we uh, read, if you can unmute for us there, uh, so that we're able to hear you, uh, uh, says that uh, 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 monarchs, uh, for example, are authoritarian, and they main people, making an example here in particular, uh, about the situation in Swaziland. There is a conflict that arises within certain quarters and people feel like there is nothing they can do to, to get rid of a monarch who they feel is oppressive. Uh, what is your view? A statement that uh, the royal family, the royal council, are the ones who are supposed to or any person correct uh, other things. But, but they themselves are not uh, uh, the power unto themselves. They still have to communicate with government because indirectly government have taken over the royal council, appointing and all these kind of things because they are the one who are giving you this uh, statement. But the point that I thought is important for us to conclude with, uh, our own liberators, if we were to call them the politicians, who are by, by, uh, getting into um, uh, elected uh, posts and, and uh, run the country, uh, they haven't considered where we come from, they are still uh, maintaining 
the apartheid and the colonizer system, they, they've never changed anything. Even the budgeting system does still, you know, uh, equitably allocated, not even equitably. Uh, they're saying when you are in uh, a city, a metro, you are, uh, you know, entitled for the portion of the budget. Whereas we thought this thing was supposed to have been changed. A bigger portion could have been addressing the previously disadvantage that we were deposed, I mean, uh, deprived our own rights and everything in the interest of the uh, white system, which today have been changed, occupied uh, and union building by our own people and are continuing with the uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, apartheid model of doing things. Yeah. They are not, we haven't seen, you can't point uh, the out. Oh, there. Hoshi Tojan, unfortunately, that line there uh, completely out. And unfortunately, we are out of time. So that's where we're going to have to leave it uh, for tonight. Uh, goes particularly Olomisa, Hoshi Tovejani, and uh, Dr. Mwana. Appreciate your time and thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Unfortunately, Shalom Bata couldn't come on there uh, on time.